Good evening. This is the news for Wednesday, February 13th, 1991. In the news tonight, the recent findings of the slaughter of 14 American bald eagles in Osage County brought a visit from U.S. Senator Don Nichols. The senator visited the Sutton Avian Research Center yesterday to tour the local facility and offer some assistance. Nichols serves on the Congressional Appropriations Subcommittee in charge of funding projects for endangered species. And he promised to work toward obtaining federal funding for the research center operations after seeing the facilities in action. The Oklahoma Republican was given a tour of the uh, and some private tutoring in the raising of a baby eagle. Now, the center's executive director, Dr. Steve Sherrod, said they now operate entirely on private donations. Sherrod said the center could expand their successful programs with the aid of federal dollars. The investigation into the eagle slayings is continuing. Kevin Colbert, Sutton Director of Development, said the U.S. Attorney has received lots of information and is continuing to follow the many leads that have come through. He said they seem hopeful the case can be resolved and brought to prosecution soon. Now, the incident has renewed the public's interest in Sutton's efforts to replenish the endangered population, Colbert said. Calls from across the nation have expressed sympathies for the tragedy. Persons with information to report should contact Oklahoma Game Ranger Larry Mannering at 1-287-3580 or Special Agent Bob Germany at 1-581-7469. Up next in the news, quick action saves a life and a big brother and his little brother, plus weather and sports. Stay with us. When you're ready for new lenses or a complete pair of eyeglasses, remember the professionals at Professional Optical. When it comes to your eyesight, don't settle for anything but the best. At Professional Optical, you'll find experienced and knowledgeable opticians to help you with quality eyewear at everyday, reasonable prices. Locally owned and operated, serving Bartlesville for over 14 years, and member of the Opticians Association of America. Bartlesville police credit the actions of a doctor and two lifeguards with saving the life of a man who nearly drowned late yesterday afternoon. Bartlesville Police Chief Tom Holland said 40-year-old Tom Lockard was swimming at the YMCA pool when he apparently had some kind of seizure. Dr. Duck M2, a resident at family practice, was swimming in the pool. Two lifeguards were also in the pool, Kyle Hoffman, who was swimming, and Spencer Stewart, who was on duty. They all noticed that Lockard had been underwater for five or ten seconds, and they went in for him at the same time, according to Holland. The police chief said when Lockard was removed from the pool, he was blue and was having difficulty breathing. Two began trying to remove the water from Lockard's mouth before rescue teams arrived. Lockard was given oxygen and taken to Jane Phillips Hospital. He was listed in serious condition this morning in the hospital's intensive care unit. Lockard was being treated for breathing difficulties, a hospital spokesman said. Holland said that the three men are heroes. He said if they hadn't pulled him out of the, uh, out of the water in another five or ten seconds, that he would have died. The Big Brothers Big Sisters annual fundraiser, Bowl for Kids Sake, will be held Saturday, February 23rd to raise money for the local program. Now, last night we talked with the chairman of this year's event, Dick Gooley. He told us what the bowling event is all about and how we can participate by pledging for a specific bowler. Tonight we'll introduce you to a big brother, Jeff Waters, and his little brother, Jason Krim. Jeff and Jason have been matched since last May and they enjoy a variety of outdoor activities together. Jeff tells us how he got involved with Big Brothers Big Sisters and what he went through to become a big brother. Well, I heard about the program back when I was in high school and I thought it was a really good organization and uh, later on I got involved in it and I thought with the uh, schedule that I work at work, I have a lot of free time and I felt like I could put that free time to good use. It's uh, it's meant a lot to me, you know, uh, not only did I, am I helping him out, but I've got a friend, you know, through him and his family. Uh, we went through a screening program. They uh, have a big, thick page full of, or pages full of questions. Uh, we go over each one, and if there's any questions, they come back and ask you a little bit, to clarify on it. They uh, did a police record check on me, and then they presented the uh, information that I gave them to the board and from there they either accepted me or denied me one or the other and it took uh, 
about, I'd say, two and a half, three weeks to, from the time I said that I wanted to be a big brother to the time that I was said, fine, you're a big brother now, and then we had to uh, go through matching them. You know, we talked about different childs and uh, finally came up with a real good match, I think. The actual matching took about a week and a half, from what I remember, and we discussed two or three different children. And they took what I had, you know, in my background, what I enjoyed doing, and they have a, a on file the kids, what they like to do, and we talked about it, and we, they matched us up on basically what we like to do, and uh, we had a lot in common. Jason talked like about what it's like to be a little, be a brother. little brother. Well, it's, it's fun to be a little brother because we do a bunch of stuff together, and. Mm, I like to go out to the lakes and go and, mm, play with his dogs. And Jason admitted he was a little nervous when he first met Jeff, but he added he was very happy to have a big brother. Jason and Jeff will be bowling in the upcoming event, and they're making it a fun activity together to collect pledges for their bowling efforts. Jason said he didn't know if he'd beat Jeff when bowling, but he sure would have fun at it. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Now, tomorrow night, we'll visit with Charlene Dew, program coordinator of the local Big Brothers Big Sisters, and hear how this event helps with the local effort. Turning to the weather today, high 65 degrees, morning low of 45, a trace of precipitation as of 7 o'clock this morning, and that's the February total so far. Normal for the month, 1.45 inches. Pollen today at 3,704. In the forecast for tonight from the National Weather Service, fair and colder. Low will be in the low 30s. Tomorrow night, will, or rather tomorrow, will be sunny and colder, or rather cooler. The high will be near 50. In Cable 30 Sports, the local high schools had a perfect night last night as both boys and girls teams from Bartlesville and Dewey came away with victories. Bartlesville was at home hosting Owasso. The girls finally snapped out of their three-game losing streak with tough defense, good rebounding, better shooting, and a deep bench. Bruin basketball is what they call that. The Lady Bruins beat Owasso 55-45 as Yogi York scored 16 for Bartlesville. The boys dominated the Rams early and went on to blow out the visitors in the BHS Fieldhouse 78-50. Mike Ellison and Tommy DeSalm top ruined scores with 14 points each. In all, Bartlesville had 13 of the 15 who played reach the scoring column. The boys will host Jinx in their next-to-last conference game tomorrow night. And then both the boys and girls will complete their Frontier Conference schedule Friday in Stillwater. In Dewey, it was a regular season ending contest for the girls and the boys. The girls had a bit easier time against Caney Valley than in their last meeting when they needed a basket at the buzzer to beat the Trojans. Last night, a strong second and third quarter led the Doggers to their 51-39 win. Jill Davis led Dewey, scores with 27 points. Now for the boys, Dewey built up a 15-point first half lead. And that helped them claim the victory over Candy Valley 83 to 76. Carl Wood top Dewey scores with 20, while Brad Woodard and Kevin Carey each added 19. Bartlesville Wesleyan College men suffered a 117 to 77 defeat at the hands of Langston last night. Myron Milton led the Eagles in their, la their losing effort with 19 points. BWC travels to play Oral Roberts next. And that'll be this Saturday in Tulsa. Other scores from yesterday, the junior varsity girls ended their season with a win over Owasso, 38-35 in overtime. And the girls finished at 11-5 on the years. The Central Middle School boys finished their year with a 54-44 loss to Broken Arrow Sequoia. This in the quarterfinals of the Arc Valley Conference Tournament, the boys in the season at 5-8. And finally, Scott South of the Phillips 66 Gymnastics Club won first in every event at last weekend's Gymnastics Center's Invitational. South captured first in six events as well as the all-around of the elite division. Now in Class 2 competition, the Phillips team finished first. Mickey Johnson helped lead the way with a first place on the parallel bars, while teammate Kevin Burgess starred with a first in the all-around. And Nathan Hicks was first in all-around in Class 2C. That's our report for this evening. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for Bartlesville School Update with Superintendent of Schools Dr. Gary Toothaker next. For Cable 30 News, I'm Phil Evans. Good night.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this evening's edition of School Report. Tonight I've invited two teachers to come and visit with me to talk about their experiences in uh, Central Middle School and the Senior High School. And the, the reason that I've invited them to come and chat with me about their experiences as teachers in those facilities is that we're going to be uh, trying to communicate to the Bartlesville public about the facilities themselves. And we've had a chance to, to hear from our principals and our parents and and tonight we're going to get a teacher's view of uh, what it's like to teach at Central and what it's like to, to teach at the senior high school. We have two wonderful teachers with, me, with us this evening. We have Nancy Allen, who's teaching at uh, Central Middle School. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Granger Metter, who is going to uh, represent the senior high school faculty and talk about his experiences at, uh, at the senior high school. Welcome. Thank you. I wonder if we could begin by uh, sharing some of your backgrounds with with the audience this evening, and perhaps we could start with you, Nancy. You could tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Are you uh, from Oklahoma? I am originally from Kansas. Um, I graduated from high school from Ponca City. My family moved there when I was a junior, and I've spent the entire time since then here in Oklahoma. I've taught in a lot of school districts. I've taught 13 years. Um, the last several I was in before Bartlesville, I was at Owasso and Union. And in fact, I've only been in Bartlesville about a year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. So you've had some other experiences to yes. make some comparisons. Where did you do your undergraduate work? I did it at Oklahoma State. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Ponca City. Ponca City. Well, you must have some um, interesting feelings when you. When it's come to it's a very similar town. Uh -huh. Very similar. Um, it's it's almost uncanny. It's so similar. Same right. size. Same. Same general, you know, location. Same feeling because of the uh, oil industry located there, and the same rich history. And there are a lot of parallels. Yeah, well, they are very similar. Of course, they're nowhere near the near us in terms of the quality of uh, of life. Uh, no, <laughs> 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 I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> and you're teaching earth science. I mean, yes, yeah. eighth grade earth science at Central. Eighth grade earth science. Yeah. And loving it. <laughs> <laughs> and loving it. It's a wonderful experience at Central, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. It's a very unique um, group of people and a very unique facility. Greg, <laughs> 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 you tell us about yourself. <coughs> I'm originally from Oklahoma City, and I graduated from Putnam City West High School there. Oh, you did? Yeah. When did you graduate from Putnam City? In 1984. 1984. Not all that long ago. Uh -huh. And then after that, I went on to uh, Norman and went to OU and got my degree there and I graduated from there in 88 and came here for my first job and I've been teaching a year and a half now at the high school. Yes, and we, we plucked you from the, uh, the, the candidate pool of yeah. this and so we, we were one of our, our success stories and recruiting efforts. And we're delighted to have you with us, Granger. Thank you. Teaching physics. Mm -hmm. Tell us about teaching physics at the senior high school in Bartlesville. What it's a Wonderful opportunity just because so many students are interested in physics because we have like five sections of physics whereas in many high schools only two or three can be offered so the, the level of community awareness of physics and involvement is very high so that's very rewarding. Uh, as far as teaching physics at Bartlesville we have problems with equipment and that we do the best we can with what we've got but we try and have as much lab experience as possible but we are limited just because of the necessary equipment that just isn't there. There's not the funding that we'd always like to have. It's a high dollar equipment yeah, uh, course, isn't it? Yes. And, and in order to, to meet the, uh, the demands for, for student learning in physics, you need to, uh, to pump the resources mm -hmm. in there to keep them up to speed. And it's ch it changes so rapidly, yeah. I, I assume that every year you would, uh, you would look at new equipment that you would like to... to That's use. true. And we've benefited greatly from a earlier monies that came into the physics program a few years ago. That helped a lot. We have a lot of newer equipment now that has filled in some of the gaps, but we still have a ways to go. But as far as the students go, it's, it's just wonderful. It's a great opportunity, and a lot of learning goes on in physics mm -hmm. with those kids. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about the idea of a new four-year high school? I think it's a very good idea. I think it's very positive. Um, I come from a three-year high school is in my background, and I've Student taught in Norman, which is a two-year high school, and then I've taught here 
for several years with a two-year high school and then a mm -hmm. mid-high that's two years. And I can see definite advantages to a three- or four-year high school over the two-year concept. Uh, one of the chief advantages I see is in the student spirit and in the leadership the older students can give. Um, when you have students at like a mid-high setting, it's hard for them to see what's going on at 11th and 12th grades and see the graduation and all those great uh, opportunities that kids look forward to. And I think that a four-year high school, one of the best benefits it could have is for role modeling for our younger students, especially the ones that are at risk. Some of them really need that that role model of someone to look at and see them graduating and doing the work and making it through all the way through the 12th grade. So I think that's probably the number one benefit I can see in a four-year high school. Yeah. Very good. Nancy, tell us about Central. In general or specifically? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I'm very fond of Central, I, uh, I will admit. It's, it's an old building. It has a lot of things wrong with it. Um, I have one of the rooms where you control the heating by opening the windows. Mm -hmm. And uh, we open as many windows as we can. Only three out of eight open those. So there are times when it's very, very hot in the room. And uh, you know, I'm in the winter, you know, you always look forward to wearing sweaters, jackets, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> um, or at least women do. And, you know, the kids do too. Sweatshirts, sweaters, that type of thing. And you just absolutely cannot, because when I come in in the morning, it may be 90 degrees in there. So the first thing I do is open the windows and uh, leave the door open so that you get a breeze coming through. And the first class that comes in will be comfortable, and they'll start to get a little cool, so we'll shut the windows. And the second class comes in, it'll be hot, so we'll open the windows. By the end of the hour, it's cooled off, so we'll shut the windows. And this goes on all day, open, shut, open, shut, open, shut. And um, as I said, I only have three that open. Now, I did have four, and uh, I was opening it one day, and it, it came out in my hand. And oh, you're the, you're the, uh, you are the teacher, that are the infamous teacher who actually had the window. I was holding this window <laughs> uh, with a class full. I had 25 students in the room uh -huh. holding this window and had That's to send... A big window. Uh, yes, That's they're about so wide yeah. and probably about three, four feet tall. And so what did you do? You, you all of a sudden I just had to hold it. And, so, and then a sent, student came and helped you? Sent, well, yeah, I did have a student <laughs> come and help me hold it. And we sent another one down for uh, the custodian to have them uh -huh. put it back in. And they, in fact, had to put it in permanently. So we cannot open that window anymore. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a real challenge. Every day is a new world. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, it's, uh, you, know, you, you wrestle with the, the safety issues, and you know, that is a, is a frightening thought to me, that, that we have the potential for, for something like that. I mean, if the, if the window, you That's know, true. if it could have, you know, If fallen it had fallen forward, it would have hit, if I hadn't have been standing there, it would have hit a student. Uh, and hit you. We, those kinds of thoughts are, are hard to, to deal with. Well, it's something that we've all come to accept. That's just the way it is, and we just kind of laugh about it. But mm -hmm. it's not an ideal situation yeah. by any means. And what do you think about the proposal to move uh, the central students to the uh, senior high school? And to well, I think that there needs to be a change made, and um, the, the high school would certainly be an improvement over central. Um, as, as far as you know, the building being ideally suited for us, uh, I'm not sure it is because of the cafeteria. Yeah, it's just not true. I mean, it, it's not ideal. But it is an improvement over Central, and which is what we have to look at. I think that, that that's an important point because uh, if I were on the Central, part of the Central community, I would, I would worry about the fact that I'm in the worst facility. You know, right now, if you rank order the quality of facilities, in the Bartlesville schools, Central would be would rank order at the bottom mm -hmm. and be, be last. And then I would look at this proposal and then I would see that we're going to construct a new high school and we're going to uh, make movements uh, from uh, mid-high and Hoover to Madison and uh, and then uh, we would we would move to the senior high school. In the new world, when the plan is complete. Uh, construction is complete in two years. 
I would then think, well, in ranking the quality of facilities in the new world of Bartlesville schools, I would still be at the bottom. <laughs> 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 and I think that that, that thought would, uh, would, would be, be something that wouldn't be as appealing to me if I were a central person and mostly interested in the quality of facilities at Central. I think that that, that would make that less appealing than an alternative that would uh, end up with that rank order improvement uh, in, in the new world. But, I th but if we, th we keep in mind that we're dealing with different scales. We have today's uh, scale of quality of facilities as opposed to the new world quality of facilities if the program passes and we construct. And so we make a quantum leap <laughs> forward. <laughs> <laughs> and while we still, be, we still may be at the bottom of the rank order of quality, the <laughs> the improvement <laughs> is <laughs> is staggering. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the windows don't come out of the senior <laughs> high school. You know, <laughs> those kinds of things. So I I, I think that <coughs> we, we need to keep in mind that that in in terms of uh, quality of facilities in a school district like this or any other school district, if you're going to rank order that quality, uh, there has to be uh, a bottom. <laughs> and well, you know, I don't. Myself, I'm not that concerned with, does my room have carpet, does it have brand new paint, does it have a sink in every, well, I do need a sink because I teach science. But I think most teachers, once you have your basics met, they're more concerned with, do I have enough equipment, do I have what I need to teach. I've taught in a school where I had a brand new room, I had, you know, carpet on the floor, I had lockers in the room. I mean, it was wonderful. It did not improve my teaching. Mm -hmm. And the there's only so much that you can do aesthetically around you to make you comfortable. Everything more than that is just, well, it's just fluff, right. in, in my opinion. And so even though we would still be at the bottom, it would improve the situation. I wouldn't have to worry about the windows falling out. I wouldn't have to worry about um, temperature. Just temperature. Control. Something as basic and, as you know. That's in the winter. In the summer or in the the hotter months, the air conditioning works great. It really does. But I cannot talk over it. <laughs> so it's a, a situation where you turn it on, cool it down, cool it down, turn it off, do your directed work, your lecture, whatever, then turn it back on. And it's on, off, on, off. And it's very, very frustrating because you try and yell, you know, you try and walk around so everyone can hear you. But just to have those little things taken care of would make such a difference in, in the quality of my teaching. My, no, no, that's not right. My teaching would not change. It would make a difference in the way I felt about it and the way that the kids, I think, would respond to The environment to it. for learning. The environment yeah. for learning, right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Granger, if you, could, if you could identify some, some equipment needs that, uh, that you'd like to see in our physics program, what would they be? What would you like to, what to kind have? Of what kind of equipment needs do you have that you well, can't have now? If you wanted to have the best high school physics class best in America, class what would you like? What the would money you like could buy? Or yes, indeed. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> could we, what could we get you? Let's uh, dream a little bit. Okay. Well, I would dream for things like, sounds terrible, but I would dream for things like uh, newer weights. We use weight sets that are so old that um, they're stamped with how much weight they are, say 200 grams. These weights are so old that the uh, stamping's worn away. So we know the weight isn't 200 grams anymore, but we just kind of pretend that it ah. still is. So first of all, I would just go through and try replace and replace some equipment. Because okay. some of it dates back to like the 1940s and 1950s. Uh -huh. It's original with the building, you can tell. And, and that would be my <laughs> first dream. <laughs> and what we do now is we're replacing it bit by bit. bit, by you know, bit. Every year we, we right. buy a new thing here and there. So that'd be the first thing is just some new stuff that that I could re depend on more uh -huh. instead of spending so much time in class repairing the little <laughs> carriages that fall apart and so on. Um, after that, we would look at things like we have some beautiful air tracks that we got with new money a few years ago, but we only can do two or three experiments with those air tracks now because we don't have the other equipment that goes with them to expand their use. Uh -huh. And I would like to expand their use throughout more of the uh, different areas in physics. 
because that's a beautiful piece of equipment. It's just that it's one of those things where you make an initial investment, but then you have to make more investment Something later to too. expand its mm -hmm. use and make it really as useful as it could be. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things I, I dream about well, good. someday. Well, I think that, uh, that those are within reach and, uh, and we'll hope that there will be an accelerated uh, uh, path to, sure. to accomplish that. And I think that with the, um, with the passage of a bond issue to deal with our facilities and equipment, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we'll be more likely to address those needs than we would otherwise. I want to thank both of you for coming and spending some time with me this evening. It's been a pleasure to oh. get your your view of, uh, of the world at Central and <laughs> Senior High School. We're fortunate to have you as teachers here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for spending some time with us this evening. Thank you.